The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up. Backyard's on fire! On the line, fighting California's record-breaking wildfires. Minutes mean everything in a firefight. Where heroes are battling the blazes for days on end. The 72, 96 hours on the line. And many worry that the worst is yet to come. Much more aggressive than it has in the past. Then, she had two life-threatening conditions, and doctors couldn't treat them both. If we remove the blood clots, you'll die of the aneurysm. If we repair the aneurysm, you'll die of the blood clots. Watch as this woman overcomes the odds on today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. Doesn't this drama that goes on in the news make you a little sick? People are doing everything they can to hurt the president. There's a whole cadre of folks that were Hillary Clinton supporters and they think that President Trump is illegitimate. Now they're going after his nominee for the Supreme Court and they're saying, well, Kavanaugh is illegitimate. And guess what they're saying? They're saying, well, he will be sitting as a juror in a trial of the president who is going to be impeached and uh, therefore Kavanaugh cannot be appointed to the Supreme Court. I mean, this is talking about a stretch, but as pointed, uh, was shown in a very uh, cogent article today in the paper, uh, the jury is 100 senators, not a Supreme Court justice. The chief judge of the Supreme Court is the presiding officer, not a, uh, another uh, uh, justice. And uh, for Chuck Schumer to play a, a card like this is just ridiculous. But uh, I think some of the people who are supposed to meet with Kavanaugh have canceled. But I, th I think that Mitch McConnell has got to jam that thing through. And uh, he, he, they, they, they did away with uh, that uh, ultimate weapon they had, the nuclear option, they used to call it. Uh, and the Democrats did it. Harry Reid did it. So he set it up so 51 senators can uh, confirm. And this man is highly, highly qualified. And meanwhile, he uh, had some crucial meeting on uh, this week, and Senate Republicans say the uh, hearings are on track. Abigail Mar uh, Robertson brings us this latest in the Kavanaugh showdown. By the end of this week, Judge Brett Kavanaugh will have met with more than half of the Senate, including Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. As many Democrats still refuse to meet with the Supreme Court nominee, now they want his hearings postponed, citing the connection between President Trump and the legal troubles of Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen. After Tuesday's courtroom outcomes, Hawaii Senator Maisie Hirono canceled her meeting with Judge Kavanaugh, while Schumer called for the hearing to be postponed altogether. At the very least, the very least, it is, seemly, it is unseemly for the President of the United States to be picking a Supreme Court justice who could soon be effectively a juror in a case involving the President himself. An aide of Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley's office told CBN News this is just a delay tactic by opponents of Kavanaugh. Carrie Severino from the Judicial Crisis Network agrees. Right now, four of the sitting justices plus Justice Kennedy were appointed by presidents who at the time were under investigation for one thing or another. So the idea that that's something novel is, is, is really, um, you know, not fair. Also this week, Kavanaugh met with Republican Senator Susan Collins, a key swing vote, who called their meeting productive and informative. The pro-choice Collins appeared pleased on where Kavanaugh told her he stands on Roe versus Wade. He said that he agreed with what Justice Roberts said at his nomination hearing in which he said that it was settled law. Justices Samuel Alito and Neil Gorsuch used similar language when pressed on the issue during their hearings. Still, pro-life advocates hope the confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh would one day lead to a change. We pray that one day uh, the Supreme Court will recognize the, the dignity of the unborn. Despite the legal drama surrounding the president's former associates, Senate Republicans remain confident Judge Kavanaugh will be confirmed before the midterm elections. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News.
I think we can be absolutely certain that Kavanaugh is going to be a, a, a confirmed. But if you want to get involved, by all means, call or write your senator, uh, because they're the ones that uh, have it. And uh, all you've got to do is pick up the phone, call the, the uh, Senate office building. They call it the SOB, Senate office building. And, uh, and tell your senator how you stand on this, including Democrats. But there were two uh, Republican senators who were in doubt. One is Lisa Murkowski from Alaska. The other is Susan Collins from Maine. And uh, Senator Collins apparently is satisfied with Judge Kavanaugh. And I think Lisa Murkowski will be the same way. Uh, you know, Roe versus Wade, in a sense, is settled law. But nevertheless, there's so many variations now. Uh, the interpretation of Roe was very draconian. And now they, 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 it's being challenged on many fronts. And this is a totally different thing. But uh, this judge should not be determined on abortion. It's not an abortion uh, decision. It's a decision having to do with the role of the judiciary in our life and whether the judges should uh, abide by a written constitution or whether they ought to be free to interpret the constitution according to sociological trends. And that's been the, the big problem. And Kavanaugh is a strict constructionist. And uh, he's the one that uh, would make a tremendous judge. So again, call that number. Call the number for the Senate and let the senators know your point of view. I think it's very, very important uh, that uh, you, unfortunately, we don't have that number up. We've gotten all that nonsense. I think if they go to CBN.com. Well, they don't have to do CBN that. News. Put the number on the screen, for heaven's sakes. I mean, it's just it's just the Senate office building. It's the United States Capitol. Call the Capitol and ask for the office of you. There you go. 202-224-3121. It's easy to remember. And uh, that's the number to call, 202-224-3121, and ask for your senator. You've got two of them for the state you live in. Uh, hopefully you know their names, but if you don't, you can look that up. But uh, it's very important. And uh, I think that, you know, two things are happening. Number one, Mueller is going far, far afield of his initial mandate. He was mandated to study Russian involvement in our election, in the presidential election that has just passed. That was his mandate. He was not mandated to study the IRS uh, rulings having to do with a businessman, but he did. And of course, they've gotten Manafort. It wasn't Mueller that did it, but it was a federal prosecutor. They found him guilty. and. Uh, I doubt very seriously if the president has the political capital right now to pardon him. Somebody would say that they ought to pardon him. I don't think that would be that be a, would not be a wise move for the president. Certainly not now. But nevertheless, Mueller should not be messing with these things. They, they're not part of his mandate. And he begins to go after Manafort, and then he's going to go after Roger Stone, and then he's going to go after somebody else, and then he's going to talk about the. Uh, the D.C. madam, and he's got all these people. I mean, you know, this, this is not part of the deal. He was not uh, put in office for that job. And I think it's very important to rule him in. But who's going to rule him in? Well, the guy who appointed him, who that's questionable. And yet, nevertheless, uh, uh, we'll see what's going to happen. But uh, all right. The other thing that shocked us recently was a lovely co-ed from out in Iowa. Uh, who was murdered. Now, let's take a look at that. She was, uh, uh, well, she's uh, in that uh, inquiry is getting stronger support from the White House. John Jessup has more. That's right, Pat. The suspect in the Molly Tibbetts murder appeared in court Wednesday facing a first degree murder charge. 24 year old Christiane Rivera is accused of kidnapping and killing Tibbetts, then hiding her body in a cornfield. Authorities say Rivera is in the United States illegally and that he used a false ID to get work. The owner of the farm where Rivera was employed says they screened him through an older system instead of Homeland Security's newer E-Verify. President Trump and other Republican lawmakers say the case highlights the need for stricter immigration laws. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders offered prayers and condolences to Tibbetts' family and friends during the White House press briefing Wednesday. 
The Bible tells us in Psalms that the Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Tibbetts family is hurting, and they're on the hearts of all Americans, and we are grieving with them. The judge ordered Rivera to be held on a $5 million cash bond. Energy Secretary Rick Perry sees energy independence as a reachable goal for the United States. Under the Trump administration, there's also a push to export more of our energy to other countries, specifically natural gas and coal, as the White House rolled back regulations on that industry this week. CBN's Jenna Browder has that story. President Trump in West Virginia coal country after his administration moved to ease regulations on the state's main industry. The affordable clean energy rule would give states the broad power to control the carbon emissions coming from their coal-fired power plants. We lost tens and tens of thousands of coal mining jobs in this country due to these extreme regulations under Barack Obama. Economist Stephen Moore sees it as a good move and praises the new direction on energy. Well, this is the best untold secret out there that uh, over the last year the United States reduced its carbon and greenhouse gas emissions more than any other country. Now people are going to be shocked to hear that because wait a minute, uh, Donald Trump pulled us out of that Paris climate accord. He points his finger at other countries seen as major polluters. There's not going to be any progress whatsoever in terms of reducing uh, greenhouse gases if China and India and other developing countries are not aboard. Bob Deans with the Natural Resources Defense Council disagrees. These countries are late into the development game, but over the next decade or so, you're going to see their numbers start to come down as these investments in clean energy economy really take effect. While Deans believes this week's action is a big step backward, the administration sees it than efforts to create more clean energy as major progress. Fifteen years ago, the United States was dependent upon a lot of countries for its energy. Today, because of innovation, because of technology, we're the number one oil and gas producing country in the world. Uh, American LNG is now going into 30 countries on five continents. Um, the economics of that is powerful. Energy Secretary Rick Perry is referring to liquefied natural gas, a cleaner form of energy that's plentiful in the United States. The idea that we can go into uh, Europe and deliver United States liquefied natural gas as an alternative source of power to countries in the EU instead of having to rely upon Russia. Uh, it is an incredibly powerful tool. Moore says the one hang-up is having the pipelines and ports to export all of this American energy. If the administration can build up the infrastructure, he says get ready for a Saudi America. Let's make North America the energy source for the world, not the Middle East. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Thanks, Jenna. Pat, it looks like we're witnessing an amazing reversal of fortunes here. Well, it's amazing. You see, uh, the Obama people uh, had a rule that we were not allowed to export uh, our natural gas because the idea was that uh, if we began to export, it would raise the price. But we have a great surplus. So who is sending natural gas to Europe? Gazprom, a Russian corporation that's under the control of Vladimir Putin. And of course, Trump made a big thing of talking about Angela Merkel uh, being in the pocket of Gazprom and that this was a pipeline that was going to tie Germany into Russia. So now with LNG, what do they do? They, they pressurize natural gas and they, 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 it, it gets to be very, very uh, compact. And of course, it's extremely explosive, but nevertheless, we have a company called Chenier Energy uh, down in the Gulf, and we've got others, but there are also companies in Europe that are taking natural gas and, and they're moving it around the, the uh, depots, they're moving around, and they compress the natural gas, and then they can put these uh, compression units out and tie them into pipelines and then feed the natural gas out. We have a huge surplus of natural gas. It's a clean-burning fuel. But I'll tell you, in terms of pollution, I have been in Beijing uh, on a Sunday morning, and I, I spoke at a church. It was a big crowd of people. And um, the air was so polluted, you could hardly stand it. I mean, uh, Beijing is just loaded with, with pollution. The Chinese have a hideous problem. And uh, 
why should, and yet we are the ones who are now the clean burning uh, country, and China was outside that Paris Accord. So it needs to be, China needs to do something, and they recognize the problem because it's a serious health problem for the Chinese. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we in this program have been watching for some years now something called the Ring of Fire. There's a Pacific plate that runs again into the North American plate and the, uh, all the other plate. You see, they call it the Ring of Fire. It just starts way down in New Zealand, that area, and it goes all the way through Indonesia and then up all around to the uh, Aleutians up into, and then all the way down to South America. Now, that's the Ring of Fire. Well, just this week, that ring began to be active, and it is a very, very serious thing that will be, have a major impact. So John has more on that story. That's right, Pat. This week's powerful earthquake in Venezuela is forcing people out of buildings and their homes. It's the third in a series of quakes in the area known as what Pat was just referencing, the Ring of Fire, and it has some experts worried. The 7.3 magnitude quake was the largest to hit the country in more than 100 years, but fortunately caused no deaths or major damage. More than 70 earthquakes have struck in the Ring of Fire over the past three days. A strong 6.7 tremor struck the South Pacific island of Vanuatu Tuesday, and a third earthquake hit the U.S. coast of Oregon Wednesday. That one was a 6.3 magnitude quake. Pat? All right, you see that, and I'll show it here again. It was on the screen. This is a triangle that shows uh, Venezuela, and it shows Vanuatu out in the Pacific, and it shows Oregon. There was a very, very perceptive article in the New Yorker uh, written a couple of years ago about what they, they call the Cascadia subduction. And the, uh, I, subsequent to that article, it was very well written, uh, a pastor has said that he's got a revelation from the Lord that there's going to be a tremendous flooding area into Oregon. Well, if this subduction takes place, and there is a major earthquake off the coast of Oregon, it will bring an enormous tsunami, not unlike what happened, uh, you know, when we had that uh, terrible tsunami that hit the, the uh, Far East. So we're looking at, at a major thing, but it's interesting, it's a triangle. It goes from Venezuela to Oregon to Vanuatu in the Pacific, and that's where the, uh, the major earthquake problem is. Of course, it bypasses L.A., but they've been talking about the big one uh, due to Los Angeles in some time. But this one from the Cascadia region uh, can be even worse. And as I say, people are having prophetic word. I, I haven't had any such prophetic words, so I'm not claiming it. But uh, the pastor who did so seemed to be a very uh, responsible type of person. And uh, uh, it, it is really scary to think about well, when 70, more than 70 quakes have hit that ring of fire in three days, yeah. something's Well, this one on. in Venezuela is the worst in, in, in the 20th century or the 21st century, 7.3. They've never, this, it's wow. the most powerful. That, that is an that's enormous, a that's a real boomer. And um, so, uh, well, just keep your eyes on it. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not telling anybody to move from, from Oregon, but nevertheless, the experts, so we're, we're trying to get hold of an of a expert in, in this particular uh, science who is the acknowledged expert who, in the Oregon area who can tell us um, a more detail uh, from a scientific standpoint. But not only is science having it on the one hand, but there, here's a guy that say I've got a prophetic word on the other, and they're they going to die. Well, also in the Pacific, uh, this is, when hurricanes get to a Category 5, they've got winds of about 160 miles an hour, and they are devastating, really devastating. And the Hawaiian Islands are now getting ready for a major, major hurricane. That's right, Pat. Turning from earthquakes to tropical storms, Hawaii is bracing for a Category 4 hurricane expected to hit land within the next 24 hours. Satellite imagery shows the massive storm system carrying 150 mile an hour winds, making it one of the strongest storms to ever come this close to the islands. Hurricane Lane's path turned toward Hawaii Wednesday, prompting warnings for the big island, Maui and Oahu, though it might not make a direct hit. The U.S. Navy is moving its ships and submarines 
and islanders are collecting supplies and preparing for possible evacuation. Well, as that storm turns, some Americans still feel the impact of Hurricane Harvey, which hit the Texas Gulf Coast a year ago. Vice President Mike Pence visited the Lone Star State Wednesday to offer support and to check in on continuing efforts, recovery efforts there. CBN's White House correspondent Ben Kennedy has the story. Last year's storm brought a week of death, destruction and loss. During that time, many turned to their faith, including the second in charge right here behind me at the White House. Even in the midst of the storm, uh, you were there. Vice President Mike Pence returned to Rockport, Texas, revisiting First Baptist Church, which was hit hard by the storm. It's profoundly inspiring uh, to see the way this church and this community rose to the challenge in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Pence also met with FEMA workers, disaster relief volunteers, and residents of the area. CBN's Operation Blessing jumped in last year long before the floodwaters receded. The team organized more than 6,000 volunteers to hand out food, water, supplies, and even offer prayer. Christians all over the world who descended upon Houston put feet to their prayers and literally outpaced FEMA helping people restore their lives. Jeremiah Johnson's home was in the disaster zone. Your backyard turned into a lake. Water was creeping up to the front door. How did you get your family of five out safe? Well, thankfully, I have four wheel drive, <laughs> uh, but truly our, our home had become a moat. Just to put it in context, I'm a father of five. Our triplet boys were 13 months at the time. We ran out of our home in our PJs, no less, jumped in our family vehicle, put it in the four wheel drive. But five of the six evac routes, they were impassable. They were flooded. Turns out Johnson got his family out safe. While his home did get damaged, others felt a much worse impact. It's been a year when driving around town, do you still see signs of the destruction of this hurricane? You do, and unfortunately, there are still people who are not back in their homes. And so uh, if you're watching this and you still want to serve, there's still opportunities for you to serve. And honestly, pray. Prayer makes a huge difference. Governor Greg Abbott proclaimed September 3rd last year as a day of prayer in the wake of the storm. Vice President Pence said a total of 31,000 federal personnel deployed across the state as part of an all-hands-on-deck effort by the federal government. Ben Kennedy, CBN News, the White House. One year later and the re rebuilding continues. Pat? Well, it's just amazing what's happened. And I, I want to tell you, Operation Blessing was there on the scene helping mobilize hundreds and hundreds and uh, actually thousands of volunteers. So that's one of the things, I mean, whenever there's a disaster of that magnitude that strikes, Operation Blessing is there in your name, in the name, in the Lord's name, but as your representatives. So again, uh, it's, it's Operation Blessing Disaster Relief. And believe me, if a big one is coming, earthquake or whatever happening in Hawaii, we want to be there to help those people. And I said uh, earlier that was a Category 5 uh, hurricane. It's been downgraded to Category 4, mm -hmm. but it's still a monstrous storm with, with killer winds. And uh, it's, it's just like the, the, the planet is just showing some wrath against the people. It's, just, it's simply amazing what's going on. And we've got something else. They're not only hurricanes, winds, floods, but also fire. That's exactly right. Coming up, meet some of the brave firefighters battling the blazes of California's wildfire in 24-hour shifts and never knowing when they'll get to go home. We're thinking at least for 14 days, but we could get extended another seven on top of that. With the sieges that we've seen, some, uh, some have been going up to 72, 96 hours on the line just because of resources. See why the worst of this battle may be yet to come after this. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it. And folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get the secret war free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? 
That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Tomorrow, an archaeological discovery, seals from Israel's King Hezekiah and Prophet Isaiah. Plus, the featured couple on TLC's Rattled. Ryan and Julia Sadler share their story of a triple miracle. And then, an American aid worker is ambushed by a radicalized Muslim. I started screaming, Daddy, that man has a gun, he has a gun. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, so far this year, wildfires have burned 1.1 million acres in California. Thousands of firefighters deploy each day to try to control the, blame, the flames. And as Heather Sellers reports, meteorologists say, sadly enough, the worst may yet to come. California is fighting fires across the state right now, and there's no end in sight. Already this year, wildfires have scorched the state in both wildlands and neighborhoods. Given the hot and dry conditions, this year's fires could easily surpass last year's record of 1.3 million acres. This is not new. This is the normal. We don't see it ending anytime soon. Still, the state hopes to gain control by placing fire camps near the biggest outbreaks. These many cities house and deploy firefighters each day. There's over 4,000 firefighters fighting the car fire here. Most are working 24-hour shifts, and they don't know when they'll be going home. We're thinking at least for 14 days, but we could get extended another seven on top of that. As these firefighters save lives and property, they try to keep themselves out of harm's way. In recent weeks, six have died fighting California fires. What motivates you to do this? Because it is hard work. Just a duty to serve and wanted to make a difference. We've had a lot of fires down in Southern California and I've seen the devastation right in our own backyard and we appreciate when people come up so we're trying to return the favor. At 6 a.m. these firefighters line up for breakfast followed by a briefing that highlights the weather, strategy and the constant reminder to stay safe. Then they're on their way for a minimum of 24 hours. With the sieges that we've seen, some, uh, some have been going up to 72, 96 hours on the line just because of resources. If that seems excessive, firefighters say it's actually very practical. The operation has to be 24 hours because once you in-brief somebody, that plan has been made for 24 hours. Those people have been briefed on that plan that they physically have in their hand, and they're going to carry out that plan. If we were to switch, let's say, a regular eight-hour shift, we would have to go through that whole cycle, and, and minutes mean everything in a firefight. So does the weather. Just as it appears they're finally gaining control, firefighters often see that progress quickly disappear. Just one simple change in the wind and something, it'll jump our containment lines and then it's back off to the races and we could, you know, add another week or two. These firefighters also know they're likely facing another record-breaking fire year in 2018. It's been uh, definitely much more volatile conditions and stuff with the dryness and stuff. Um, the lack of rains we had all through California fire seems like it's been much more aggressive than it has in the past. There's no one culprit responsible for these fires. They're fueled by drought, heat, dead trees, and construction in wildland areas. Most Californians realize the extreme threat. If they don't know someone directly affected, they've likely breathed in the smoky air that travels far from the fire locations. The state will spend close to $2 billion just to fight fires this year. Hey, backyard's on fire! Plus, whatever it takes to repair everything, from utility lines to burned out guardrails. Thousands of homes and businesses must be rebuilt, and many Californians will either pay higher insurance rates or be dropped because of the fire risk. Meanwhile, tough months are still ahead. Forecasters say the wind traditionally increases in the first part of autumn. But if signs like these are any indication, Californians have developed a deep appreciation for those willing to sacrifice it all. It really builds them up. It's almost like a recovery process for first responders to know that the community's out there and they support what they're doing. 
Reporting in Northern California, Heather Sells, CBN News. Brave people, you, you know, you need to appreciate your police, your firefighters, these public servants. They, they really don't get paid a lot of money. Uh, they, they don't have the time with their families that they would like to have. Uh, they, they're called upon to make extraordinary sacrifices and in many cases put their lives on the line. And many of them die serving you and me and the communities where they live. So pray for them. Do everything you can to encourage them. And don't try to cut their money and everything. They, they need help. Absolutely. Boy, okay. real heroes. Wonderful people. Mm -hmm. Up next, a young wife and mother gets drastic news from her doctor. He said, if we remove the blood clots, you'll die of the aneurysm. If we repair the aneurysm and treat you for the blood clots, you'll die of the blood clots. Watch what happens once this woman is sent home to die. Let's take a look at some numbers. Four out of five people who have a stroke, their first symptom is a stroke. 80% of all strokes and heart disease, preventable. And $149 is all it takes to get screened and help take control of your health. We're Lifeline Screening. And if you're over 50, call this number to schedule an appointment for five painless screenings that go beyond regular checkups. We use ultrasound technology to literally look inside your arteries for plaque which builds up as you age and increases your risk for stroke and cardiovascular disease. And by getting them through this package, you're saving over 50%. So call today and consider these numbers. For just $149, you'll receive five screenings that could reveal what your body isn't telling you. And I'm gonna tell you that's the best $150 I've ever spent in my life. Lifeline Screening. The power of prevention. Call now to learn more. Attention, do you have Medicare? Do you want to make sure you have the most benefits and lowest possible out-of-pocket costs? You may be able to lower your out-of-pocket costs and get dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage included in your plan. Call the Medicare Coverage Helpline now to find out what you deserve. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald. Over three million people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. But there are still many people who don't check to see if they're eligible for more benefits and lower out-of-pocket costs. It's so easy. One simple free call could save you money and get you more benefits. Be smart. Call the Medicare Coverage Helpline now. Call now to see if you may be eligible to lower your copays and get extra benefits, including dental and prescription coverage. Don't delay. Call to see if you're able to save money and get more benefits now. Call 1-800-256-3200 now. Again, call 1-800-256-3200 now. Margaret Green was just 34 years old when her doctor told her to go home and make arrangements to die. She had not one, but two life-threatening conditions, and she was given only a 5% chance of survival. But Margaret had already survived an abusive past, and she wasn't about to give up now. The doctor comes in and he says, she has about a 95% chance of not even making it. So you all need to go home and make arrangements. Margaret Green was 34 years old when doctors told her and her husband, Jermaine, she had two life-threatening conditions. I said, no, I can't receive that. And my husband was like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna trust God. I knew that he could heal her, but the question was, are you going to heal her? But Margaret's story of healing isn't just about whether God would heal her, but how. It begins when she was a young girl growing up in a rough St. Louis neighborhood with an abusive alcoholic father. She was four when her mother, who was afraid for her life, grabbed two of Margaret's younger siblings and fled. Margaret and an older sister were left behind with their dad to suffer his abuse. He would slap me in the face or he would, you know, kick me in the face. He never missed a day where he wouldn't, you know, call me names or, you know, blame me for my mother leaving him. Her nightmare didn't end there. For the next three years, she would be molested by a friend of her father's. At eight years old, she attempted suicide. I took the whole bottle of pills that were there, and I said life was, life was just better without me. 
Afterwards, Margaret was sent to live with her mom who started taking her to church. At 12, she made the decision to follow Christ, but there was something she couldn't understand. I began to ask him who he was and if he, and if, if he was real and if he was there, why did he allow all of this to happen to me? When God didn't answer me, I felt like he did not hear me. As a teen, Margaret rebelled, becoming promiscuous, drinking alcohol and using and selling drugs. That's what happens when you're, you're damaged. By 21, she had four children and was stealing, selling drugs, and stripping to provide for them. She spent six years in and out of homeless shelters and abusive relationships. I would always um, pray, even though I felt like God wasn't listening. I w it was almost like checking the sea. Maybe one day he'll hear me and come and save me from this. Then one night, Margaret went to a party with two men she had just met. While there, she was violently raped. They plotted how to kill her, and that's when Margaret began to call on the name of Jesus, which only angered the men. And he said, don't call him, he can't hear you. So he began to punch me in the back of my head. It didn't matter how much he punched me, I continued to call on Jesus' name. They eventually let Margaret go, leaving her on the streets to die. The next morning, she turned her life over to God and began to seek after Him. That I decided to stop going to the club, stop selling drugs, everything. I mean, everything. Over the next seven years, Margaret began her new life in Christ. A few years later, at a church event, Margaret met Jermaine, they married, and they blended their families together. The Lord really, really put his hand on our marriage, you know. Um, he was right for me and I was right for him and our family was perfect. Then, two years later, Margaret went to her doctor with severe abdominal pains. Tests revealed she had a dissecting abdominal aortic aneurysm. Three weeks later, they discovered multiple blood clots in both of her lungs and one next to her heart. They could treat one or the other, but not both. He said, if we remove the blood clots, you'll die of the aneurysm. If we repair the aneurysm and treat you for the blood clots, you'll die of the blood clots. Surgery was risky, so instead, Margaret was prescribed blood thinners to avoid more clotting. But even then, she had only a 5% chance of survival. He told me that basically at any time, she could go. So I needed to cherish all the moments that I have with her. And the news was very scary. We prayed, I encouraged her, I said, hey, it's okay, dry your eyes. God's gonna bring you through this. Three weeks later, Margaret went for a follow-up visit. They discovered the blood clots had dissolved. And they said, we've never seen a case where blood clots have dissolved that fast. They said, there's, there's something to you we don't know, but there's a plan, God has a plan. But the aneurysm still threatened her life. Over the next two years, Margaret's activities were restricted. She was even hospitalized 28 times. She didn't know whether she'd live or die. Despite it all, she and Jermaine continued to pray and believe God for a miracle. Finally, she says during a time of prayer, God spoke to her about her condition. And he said, well, some issues are hereditary, some are connected to your heart. And he said, your sickness, Margaret, is connected to your issues that you're having that's in your heart. The Lord said, hey, I need you to forgive everyone that's hurt you, everyone that has rejected you. So she started praying and after three months, she noticed she was no longer in pain. I said, I feel different. I just felt so different in my body. And I said, Something's, something has changed. I said, okay, so are you saying God healed you? She said, yes, the Lord healed me, I'm healed. The couple went to her doctor who ordered CAT scans. When they returned home, they got a call from the doctor's office. He said, I don't know what happened. He said, but that aneurysm is no longer there. And they're like, this does not happen, you know. Aneurysms don't regress, they don't shrink. And they were like, we cannot explain this, you know? So we can only put resolved. This issue has been resolved, miracle. She's a miracle. She was so excited, she just broke down crying. So we just kind of, you know, held each other and we were you know, just very happy that God 
did what he said he was going to do. Margaret and Jermaine just celebrated their seventh wedding anniversary. They share hope and encouragement to their followers on their weekly radio show. She's also written a book where she encourages everyone to trust God, to heal the broken places in their lives, and be kingdom created. The power of forgiveness is able to heal. Anytime you're broken, anytime you're down and out, just forgive. God is still a healer. He's able to work miracles. All you have to do is trust Him. Boy, you know, we've talked about this pat in the pat, but past on this program, the power of forgiveness. It's not so much for the person who's the perpetrator right. of your pain or your, your ill treatment. It's, it's for, for you. your freedom. Exactly. Yeah, amazing story. Well, you know, the, Jesus was saying, when you stand praying, if you have aught against any, forgive, as your heavenly Father might forgive you. Uh, it's, a, it's a key to miracles. So anyhow, you've got the report. I do. This is Charlie from Peabody, Massachusetts. He was watching this program on August 7th when you received this word, Pat. You said, there's a neck pain. Oh, it hurts so bad right now. Just turn your head and it'll pop. Put your hand on your neck. The Lord has just healed you. Charlie, take it in Jesus' name. Charlie had been suffering with neck pain for 20 years. Wow. He reached out, touched the specific area, and the pain is gone. Praise God. Well, God bless him. I, I must confess, I don't know Charlie, but the Lord knows him. The Lord knows Here's him. one. This is Lillian, who lives in Buffalo, New York. She had suffered from migraines since her 20s. She's now in her 70s. That's 50 years of migraines. Last month, she heard Terry say, somebody else, you have these migraine headaches. It's not like it's sinus or you had allergies. It's like a band that goes around your front of your head, around your back. Then you'll have it again the next day and the next day and the next day. Uh, you've never been free of it. But right now, Jesus is setting you free. Lillian said, uh, he said, put your hand on it. And Lillian did just that. She hasn't had a migraine since. Praise 50 God. years of suffering completely healed. Wow. And you don't know Lillian in Buffalo either, do you? I still don't know Lillian in Buffalo, but <laughs> as you said, right. Jesus does. <laughs> we want to pray right now for you folks. Hey, there's nothing impossible with God, so we'll join hands. Father, thank you for healing Lillian. Thank you for healing Charlie. Thank you for people all over this nation and around the world that are being touched by God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else, we're talking about an aneurysm. You have been diagnosed with an aneurysm. Uh, it's an aortal aneurysm, and that is very serious. And if it bursts, you'd die. But God is reaching down right now, and he's restoring the stability of that aorta, and you will be completely healed in the name of Jesus. I think the name is George. Go ahead. Yeah, there's someone, you have recurring strep throat. I don't know if you have a poor immune system or what it is, but that cutting feeling in your throat when you get this, it just comes on you and you have to take a lot of medication for it. God is healing you from it right now. Put your hand on your throat, receive your healing. It will not return in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, you've been suffering. You've cried out to God and God's heard your prayer. He's washing down. He loves you. Receive his love right now. Let the anointing of the Lord come into your life right at this moment. And from this moment on, be made whole. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And amen. Okay. Okay. Well, still ahead, your questions and some honest answers. Joyce wants to know, why are Christians not supposed to do yoga? Pat's going to answer that and lots more when we come back. The veil between us and the Lord is thinnest when we're in our suffering. You know, this brain tumor that keeps coming back, craniopharyngioma you're born with. And when they diagnosed me, they gave me all of the different ways that I could deal with this tumor through, you know, these actions and prayer and exercise and just do everything I can. And the last two appointments with my physician, it shrunk. They don't shrink. They just don't. And it's, um, God gets all the glory. We're here by His grace and mercy. Our bodies are fragile but resilient, temporary. 
So we live our days joyfully. We live our days hopefully. We live our days faithfully. And in doing that, my goodness, it changes the world. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Watch the five-part series, Protect Your Sleep, all next week on The 700 Club. What's with that kid? Where's your parents? Oh, you seem pretty smitten with the big man's daughter. Let's show him that you're a qualified assistant. Pull out your wrist. Uh, I'm gonna check your pulse. A little faster than normal. So all the way you're looking at the girl. They're bringing in another doctor. There's gotta be a way we can shorten the distance between the mountain and the ocean. I wouldn't give up for you. You're meant to be with Grace. And welcome back to the 700 Club. It's a happy day on Wall Street. The bull market in stocks is now considered the longest ever. The stock market bottomed on March 9th of 2009, and despite some corrections, has been heading up ever since, getting a big boost after President Trump won the election in November of 2016. Many analysts say the bull market still has room to run. Some believe it could reach 30,000 before it ends. Well, a new tariff battle between the U.S. and China. Both countries have increased tariffs on billions of dollars of each other's goods. The 25 percent penalties apply to $16 billion of imports from each side. China said Thursday it will file a complaint against the U.S. with the World Trade Organization, claiming the U.S. violated its tariff rules. And you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website. That's CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of today's 700 Club right after this. I don't know why I didn't get screened a long time ago. I kept putting it off. What was I thinking? Okay, Mr. Jones, we're all done. I told you it was easy. Well. At Lifeline Screening, we use ultrasound technology to help check your risk for stroke and heart disease. After all, four out of five stroke victims received no warning. Right now, a package of five painless screenings is just $149. So call today. Lifeline Screening, the power of prevention. Here you go, little guy. A cockroach can survive submerged underwater for 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Not getting in today. Not on my watch. Pests never stop trying to get in. At Terminix, we never stop working to keep them out. That's what makes us America's leading pest and termite control provider, because we do whatever it takes to stop them in their tracks. For a free pest estimate, call 1 800 771 6236. Take action to protect your home today. And if pests ever do come back, so will we. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. For a free pest estimate, call 1-800-771-6236 or visit Terminix.com. Terminix, defenders of home. Grandma Encarnacion takes care of her two grandchildren who also live with her. At one time, she was so discouraged she thought about taking her life all because she could not bear to see her grandson sick and starving. Grandma Encarnacion works hard preparing food to sell in the market. Her five-year-old grandson, Stevie, is glad he gets to stay with her. I love my grandma so much. Stevie has been living with his grandparents since birth, but always struggled to get enough to eat. He ended up severely malnourished. One day, I only ate crackers. Life has been so hard. We often scrimp on food. Stevie got malnourished and sick. Stevie's grandpa, Silverio, used to have a coconut business. 
then two typhoons destroyed his trees and their livelihood. Grandma grew desperate. One day, I thought about killing myself so I wouldn't have to watch my grandson suffer. But I couldn't. There would be no one to take care of him. Then Grandma learned about a feeding program designed to fight malnutrition sponsored by CBN's Orphan's Promise. It provided hot, nutritious meals for Stevie. It's yummy. I'm happy I can eat. And that one meal a day for Stevie has taken a lot of pressure off of his grandparents. But to help them even more, we invested in Grandma's cassava business. Now she's able to make a lot more cassava rice cakes to sell. And that, along with the feeding program, means they all have plenty to eat. I make a good profit for my sales. Thank you, Orphan's Promise. God answered my prayer and sent CBN to rescue us. Can you imagine having to watch your children starve? You know, we have an opportunity, you and I, to make such a huge difference in the lives of families in need, and you're doing that, especially orphans, widows. CBN is reaching out to them all around the world, and we say thank you for your support because it makes that possible. When you join the 700 Club, you're doing so much for so many. This is just one story of thousands and thousands of lives touched by your generosity. If you're not a 700 Club member, then today's a great day to join. It's a commitment of just 65 cents a day. That's $20 a month. It doesn't seem like much, but when we all do that together, we can make a huge impact. So will you go to your phone and call now? Our number's toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I want to join the 700 Club. And when you do, I've got something wonderful for you. It's Pat's teaching on angels. It's called Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. It'll have an impact on your life, just like it did on Vanessa. She lives in East Point, Georgia. She says, thank you for angels. This DVD made me overjoyed because I know angels can help me. Thank you again. Really mattered to her. It'll make a difference to you, but more importantly, you'll be making a difference in someone else's life. So call us now, 1-800-700-7000. Amen. Up next, we've got your email. Catherine says, the New Testament says you cannot remarry, for if you do, you're living in adultery. So should my second husband and I divorce to get into heaven? Your questions and Pat's honest answers when we come back. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? for your questions and some honest answers. And Pat, this first one comes from Joyce who wants to know why are Christians not supposed to do yoga? Uh, well, uh, stretching exercises are very good for your health. Uh, it doesn't hurt to stretch. As a matter of fact, uh, I want you to warm up before you stretch because you might rip a muscle. But the idea of yoga, you're supposed to have a mantra. You're supposed to call on a Hindu god. And you say, well, all those words don't mean anything. I don't understand what they are. Well, you're calling on a Hindu god, and you're doing it in Sanskrit, or you're doing it in, in uh, some kind of uh, different language. That's why yoga isn't wrong, is wrong, because when you do it that way, but as far as stretching, there's nothing wrong with stretching. Uh, and if there's some poses and stretching that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But just make sure it doesn't have religious connotation to it, mm -hmm. all right? This is Catherine who says, I remarried four years ago to a great guy who had also been divorced. We're both Christians. 
The New Testament says you cannot remarry, for if you do, you're living in adultery, and it clearly states adulterers will not go to heaven, among many other things. Should we divorce and live a life by ourselves to get into heaven? You know, this is a tough thing. I think it's time the church, as a body, uh, deal with this whole matter. There are so many people who are having divorces. And Jesus said, you know, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And I'm not sure that some of these marriages, maybe yours was not one, that God really joins you together. Uh, you know, if a spouse dies, the brother isn't, isn't uh, sister isn't bound. If the unbelieving spouse leaves, the brother or sister is not bound in that case. And you go to the Old Testament, and you've got uh, a whole group of people who had married heathen women, and they were instructed by the priests to get rid of the, of the heathen women and their children. So I don't know. Uh, I, I know what it says, but you, you're happily remarried. I don't know what happened before. But if I were you, I would ask the Lord to forgive you. I don't think you ought to get divorced and, and, yes. and suffer. I, I really don't. Uh, and somebody might disagree with me, but uh, I just think the Lord is a, is a God of compassion. And I, th I think you live your life for the Lord, and what went on before is, is just, it's all over. Okay, this is Zenda, who says, what do you think about going to church on Saturday instead of Sunday? The Seventh-day Adventists believe Saturday is the day you go to church and do no work. Is that such a bad thing as long as you take one day a week for the Lord? Uh, you know, the, the Muslims have Friday, the Jews have Saturday, the Christians have Sunday. Um, I think the whole idea of the Sabbath was that Jesus said, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And I think that he, the Lord established one day out of seven as a day of rest. Uh, it's not a day where you're supposed to be frantic and doing church work. You're supposed to rest and worship God because our bodies need to be refreshed. Our minds need to be refreshed. And the day of the week is not really uh, what's important. The important thing is that you're having a day of rest. You know, six days the Lord created the earth, and on the seventh day he rested. So seven day, well, whatever. All right. Yeah. Here's a quick one. Tithing was mentioned way before the law was given to Moses, so tithing was not part of the law. My question is, who taught tithing in the New Testament? <laughs> well, I think it is built into the fabric. You know, Jacob gave tithes of what he had. Uh, when Abraham met Melchizedek, he gave a tithe of what he had. Uh, and I, I just think there's the idea a 10% of what you have is to give unto the Lord. But the idea in the New Testament, we give tithes and offerings. And look, 100% of your money belongs to the Lord. Not 10%, 100%. It's a question of how much you get to keep, not how much you have to give away. Well, today's power minute is from the book of Isaiah. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Tomorrow, an archaeological discovery, seals from Israel's King Hezekiah and Prophet Isaiah. Plus, the featured couple on TLC's Rattled. Ryan and Julia Sadler share their story of a triple miracle. And then, an American aid worker is ambushed by a radicalized Muslim. I started screaming, Daddy, that man has a gun, he has a gun. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a better gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy.